Because we just linked across our entire church and we got the same problem everywhere, more people than we have space. And so praise God for that. What a wonderful way to enjoy Sunday night. And if I could just give a little shout out, uh, firstly, obviously here at Hills, every available building that we have is packed with people. And on top of that, between the services, you may have be able to have a look on the screen there, hopefully, between the services, that they've got uh, a huge crowd. Do they have a photo? I thought they had a photo of people. There it is. There are people watching from the outside here. Fantastic. <laughs> So we've got a lot of people on the property and in Melbourne, they're using the Margaret Court Tennis Arena where the Australian Open is. And uh, they've had to push back the screens and everything to put more people in there, which is a great problem. And same thing's happening in Brisbane and the RICC, Royal International something or other, something or other in Brisbane. We're glad you're all there. And of course, every other place that we're meeting, Noosa, Gold Coast, and Surfers, in Darwin, uh, and everywhere else. So hi to everyone. We're going to introduce in a moment one of the greats of our generation when it comes to the gospel of Jesus. I must say uh, also that we're excited about the Hillsong channel. And for those who will be watching this on the Hillsong channel all around the globe, we're glad you could be part of our service. And there's other people who are live streaming as well. So thank God. Reinhard Bonnke is a mighty man of God. I think when you think of mass evangelism, to me, two people obviously immediately come to your mind. One is Billy Graham, Dr. Billy Graham, who's led multitudes to Christ. And the other is Dr. Brother Reinhard Bonnke, who his ministry in many parts of the world, in Africa, spoken many times to crowds up to and over a million people at a single time and led multitudes to Jesus. And on top of that, see mighty miraculous healings and supernatural things happen. And, uh, just a, in my mind, just one of the greats of our generation. We're so grateful that for three Easter's, three different Easter's now, he's come, come all this way to be part of Hillsong, uh, Hillsong Church, part of our Easter. So we're grateful for that. And I'd love you to give him a huge welcome. Then we're going to, whoa, 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 whoa. Well, you guys are too keen to say thank you. But and then we're going to watch a video, which I think introduces us a little to uh, Rahab Bonke's ministry, and then he'll come right on up and preach the Word to us. So come on, why don't you give him a big thank you in advance. And maybe everywhere you'd like to be seated, we'll watch this video, and then let's enjoy the ministry tonight. Amen. We all need a Savior, and His name is Jesus. He wants to walk hand in hand with you. Are you happy? Today is your day of salvation. Now is your time of salvation. This week is your week of salvation. If you believe that tonight, shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Tonight, you may come here as weak as can be. You will go home like a conqueror with Jesus inside of you. on the cross my friends he took the punishment for your sins and the punishment for my sins what he got
Lord Jesus. I surrender my life to you. in the highest and happy Easter he is alive behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world amen and he is alive you may be seated I am very happy to be here this is to me a very very special place thank you so much dear Brian and thank you so much dear Joel and uh, all of Hillsong Church, this fantastic presentation by the students and uh, uh, the worship and singing, all is so wonderful. Hallelujah. I, I, I uh, greet all those that are in the other campuses across the country. I'm glad you are tuned in and I'm Sure, we are going to celebrate the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah, well, um, I heard people say, I found the Lord and I won't correct them. I'd say it's okay, it's a wonderful testimony, but actually none of us found the Lord. He was never lost. <laughs> we were lost. And he saved me, he found me, he saved me. And the Son of Man is still out to seek and to save. You know, there are many religions in this world but in every religion, man seeks God. But the Bible faith is the other way around. God seeks man. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. In other religions, idols are carried. But the God of the Bible carries his people to gray hairs, the Bible says. I'm still waiting for mine. <laughs> Next month I turn 76. Yeah. And I don't dye my hair. I just put polish on my shoes. Well, what a mighty God we serve. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We came here when all traffic converged here on this church property. And uh, actually, I like it. <laughs> you know, I, I tell you the truth. In Africa, I've been sitting for hours in our own traffic jam. <laughs> My people said, oh, 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 even the police was stuck. 
the blue light didn't help. And you know what I said? This is the catastrophe I have prayed for. Amen. When there is such a tremendous hunger for the Word of God, nations, millions are getting saved and hear the Word of God and are delivered from the power of sin and Satan. It's the greatest of all miracles. Hallelujah. I want to start straight away because... This is not Africa. I am under time constriction. <laughs> I would, my theme would be free indeed. Free indeed. And we read from John chapter 8, verse 34. Jesus answered them, Most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. And verse 36, Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I was a young minister in Germany, my home country. Hey, geht's euch gut hier? Okay, schön. <laughs> I was invited to uh, visit uh, somebody in, in a prison. And uh, I went there. It was an old prison building. I stood in front of a huge gate and there was a little window inside that door. And I pushed the button of a bell and after a while somebody opened that little window and looked out and I told him who I was and whom I wanted to visit. He said, wait a moment. After a little while he came back, opened the gate. He had a big bunch of keys in his hands. I entered, he locked the door behind me and I stood in front of door number two. He took another key, opened door number two. We walked through, he locked it behind me. I stood before door number three. He took another key and finally I was inside the prison. Three locked doors behind me and I saw those prison cells left and right and everywhere. I heard people scream and shout and lament. It touched me greatly. Jesus said, surely, most assuredly, I say to you, whosoever commits sin is a slave or a prisoner of sin. I describe to you actually the prison of sin, which has got many different compartments, many different cells. Name it what you want. The liars, the drunkards, the adulterers, the thieves, the addicts, the robbers, murderers, they're all there. They are all there crying for help hammering their doors. I want to be free. Only the devil hears them because he's the prison keeper. And he's got that bunch of keys. And when he hears them cry in torment, he says, I'm glad you believed my lies. And I'm glad you are in there. Now let me change the scene quickly. These cries of desperation are heard in heaven. And the Father in heaven turned to His Son 
and said, my son, can you hear? Can you hear the people scream that there is no help for them? The, father, the son said, yes, my father, I can hear it. And then the father sent Jesus. Bethlehem is a historic fact. Jesus, God Father, God Son, and God Holy Spirit. I think Jesus was the only one who had a part in his family planning. <laughs> his own family planning. And then Christmas came. Jesus came. And when he was 30, he started his glorious ministry of redemption, of salvation. This is my beloved son, the father called from heaven, in whom I am well pleased. Now let me just <coughs> uh, wave my uh, uh, my picture a little bit further and then I come to the real solid truth. When Jesus was 30, he went to the prison of sin and he knocked outside. Open! Satan, open! Satan opened that little window in that, terror, in that big gate. A light hit him. And he knew who it was. Jesus, the Son of God, the Savior of mankind. He said, what do you want? Why do you come to torment me before my time? Jesus said, open up. I have come to set the captives free. <laughs> Satan wasn't willing to do that. Not release his prized captives. And then Jesus did something. He challenged him for a duel. Satan had to accept. And this is what happened. Just outside of Jerusalem, on a low hill called Golgotha or Calvary, the greatest war of the whole universe began. Jesus Christ versus Satan, also called Lucifer. It was an awesome battle. The sun lost its shine. The earth quaked. The rocks split. The dead were rising and walking in the streets of Jerusalem. The whole universe was in convulsion. Darkness fell. And suddenly eyewitnesses as reported here in the Bible. Heard a mighty voice from the cross. Shouting. It is finished. It was finished with the devil. The head of the serpent was crushed. Jesus is victor. What a mighty, wonderful Jesus we have. Now I'm almost done with my introduction. I feel 
when I read the Bible, I always have the feeling that that Calvary was the platform of Christ. And somehow I feel the cross was his pulpit. And from there he preached words that shook hell, shook heaven, and keep shaking the world. It is finished. Hallelujah. It is finished indeed. Now quickly. When Jesus, three days later, rose from the dead. If you ask me what I think he did first, I'll tell you. I think he went back to the battleground and was looking for something. Oh, he found it. The bunch of keys. The bunch of keys. Oh, hallelujah. And he took it. And he went back to that prison that held us. He no more knocked. He no more pleaded. He was key number one for door number one. Walked through and left it open. He took key number two for door number two. Walked three through and left it open. And so with door number three, and so with door number three, look what he says in Revelation 1.18. I'm sure you know that by heart already. This is what he said, opening his arms. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys of hell and death in my hands. <laughs> Hallelujah! This is the Savior of the world. And there's only one Savior. His name is Jesus. As I've said before, in other places, no other religion can take away from us the cross of Jesus Christ. Why not? Because nobody else died right there on that cross for the sins of the world as Jesus Christ, the Son of God. You may look where you want. You may study every religion on earth. You do not find another savior than our savior, Jesus Christ. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Are you happy? Yes. Glory to God. Glory to God. Then Jesus took the keys and unlocked every door. He unlocked every door and declared freedom. He declared salvation. Come out! I have freedom for you. You may not know what freedom is from Satan, freedom from addictions, from drugs, from pornography, and from all these evils that bind us with chains. Jesus is here. I tell you one thing. If anyone accepts the offer of salvation, anyone who watches me right now, Your prison will not just evaporate, it will vaporize. 
It will vaporize. It was here right now. It is gone forever. Captive until now. You leave home rejoicingly. Because Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. I preached in Germany somewhere in the south. I never forget it. And uh, the place was packed. And in the first few rows, I saw a young man sit. I think he was about 22 or so. And he was crying. He cried as long as I preached. And I thought, oh, the Lord must have touched his heart. I need to speak to him afterwards. When the meeting was over, he hadn't responded to the call of the gospel. I put my hand on his shoulder and said, young man, I saw that you were very moved when you heard the gospel. He looked at me, his eyes cried red, and he said to me, when I listen to you, my mind says, it's all a fairy tale, ein Märchen. I said, tell me, do you always cry when you hear fairy tales? He said, no, that's just the point. My mind says, it is fairy tale. And my heart cries, it is true. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus has come to set the captives free. And you know the thoughts that rushed and flashed through my mind were these. A bird that is born in a cage, born in a cage. All it knows are the cage bars. Nothing more. That bird doesn't know the blue sky, the golden sun, the high mountain, the deep valley, doesn't miss it even because it doesn't know about it. And so are people who are in the prison of sin. All they are aware of are those iron bars. They've never known anything else. My father did it. My grandfather did it. Now it's me and one day my children will do it. No, no, and no. Jesus is here to unlock your door. And you will know outside of your captivity is a glorious kingdom. It's called the kingdom of God. And when you learn to spread your wings of faith, you will rise. You will rise and see the golden sun and build your nest on the highest mountain and you will know what the kingdom of God is. Are you happy? Yes. Praise God. Praise God. I've got another point and that is this. Jesus did not come to make our prison in which we are from birth, every human being, that's what the Bible says, is a sinner by birth. Jesus didn't come to make our captivity a little bit more comfortable. You know, he doesn't come with a mattress so that you can sleep better. He doesn't bring some little bit of entertainment and bring you a television set. 
and just make it bearable. Some people look for a bearable life. That to me is actually miserable. I don't want to live bearably in sin, being unclean. I want to be free. Jesus is calling because Satan has been conquered. You don't need to stay one more day in captivity. Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. In other words, the gospel is not the gospel of reformation. Sorry, Martin Luther. <laughs> it's not the gospel of decoration. It's not the gospel of renovation. It's the gospel of liberation. It's liberation. We need more than a new makeup. We need more than just a plastered over. We need to become new creatures, new creations. Our minds renewed, everything renewed. If anyone is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. Isn't that wonderful? That is wonderful indeed. Glory to God. This is not absurdity. This is reality. The word true in the New Testament, I'm told, is the same word as real. True and real. Hallelujah. Jesus is real. Salvation is real. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is not etherical, philosophical. Jesus, when he came to earth, he carried a cross for us, not the couch of a psychiatrist. <laughs> Amen. We need more than counseling. We need freedom by the Holy Spirit. A new heart, a new mind. Your marriage will be wonderful. You know what, who a perfect husband is? A perfect husband is the one who doesn't expect his wife to be perfect. Yeah. And a perfect husband is the one who doesn't expect his wife to be perfect, but both have a perfect savior. Everything Pivots in Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God in the highest. No divorce in Jesus' name. I say it again. No divorce in Jesus' name. Instead of a divorce, you will have a new honeymoon. And to top it, I like to say this, Jesus knows how to put the honey back into the moon. <laughs> oh, hallelujah! Oh, hallelujah! We serve a mighty God. We are not defeated. 
We are victorious in the one who has overcome the world. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. In Revelation 3 verse 20, Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him. I like that. I will come into him. That's King James. I will come into him. Wow. When Jesus came in my life, when I sat in a meeting like this, except much smaller, they are North Germany. <laughs> and I received Jesus in my heart. He, he somehow came in. He built his throne and his state. He's there. You out of jail, he comes into you. It's a new life. Out of darkness. And we will dwell in the heart of God. And the light of Jesus Christ. Can I tell you a little story? Man. You will never believe it, but it's a fact. I've got witnesses. You know, people say when they, I talk about miracles, has, is there, was there any witness there? I said, yes, 1,200,000. <laughs> and Jesus said, ye yeah, are my witnesses. You know, I, I, I'm already preaching the gospel now for, uh, for 58 years. Yes. And I'm married for 52 years. Same wife. <laughs> and my whole family, eight grandchildren. We all serve Jesus. I'm very, very glad for that. We had a crusade, and our organ, our electric keyboard, broke. We fixed it, broke again. We fixed it, broke again. I said, when they came to me and said, we have to fix it again, I said, I think this thing has to be buried. <laughs> We've got to go and buy a new one. So my music minister and I, we went to the city. And we went from music shop to music shop to get the best deal. It was noon. We entered the biggest music shop in that city. There was, there, uh, uh, there was a, a, a salesman. And he just had crossed his legs, stood, leaned against the door, smoked a cigarette, and watching a passing woman. <laughs> I wasn't interested in that gentleman. I was interested in the keyboards. So I went in and I went from keyboard to keyboard with my professional music minister and we checked it out. I love, I love to play myself. And um, when we were right at the back of the shop, Suddenly, the salesman, the smoking salesman. <laughs> In Germany, we call the cigarettes the devil's macaronis. <laughs> <laughs> At least when I was young. <laughs> he stood in front of me. His wa eyes wide open. He was shaking like a leaf. And he said to me, sir. I can see Jesus in your eyes. I don't know what happened to me. I think I started shaking too. I said, how can this be? To cut a long story short, we had a revival in that music shop. And that man got gloriously saved. But 
I didn't buy the keyboard there, that's all I know. <laughs> I lost trace. When I walked to the parking lot, and I was walking, I said, Lord, there's something I will never understand. This man I never knew, and truly he never knew me at that time. How is it possible that a total stranger can say to me, I can see Jesus in your eyes? Suddenly the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart. And this is what he said. He said, Reinhardt, no problem. <laughs> Jesus lives in your heart. And sometimes he looks, likes to look out of the windows. <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And when Jesus looked out, that man happened to look in and he got saved. Jesus is here to get you out. And then he will come into you. He will walk with you. He will talk with you. His peace will follow you. You know, you, know, you will never again need to run away from the devil. Because the devil will run away from you. That is gospel. That is salvation. That is life outside of the cage. That is life in the kingdom of God. Outside of that prison. In Jesus' name. Are you blessed? If therefore, the Son of God makes you free, you shall be free Indeed, no question left, no doubt, you will be free. The sins you used to do, you don't want to do them anymore. It's not, I cannot. You don't want to do them anymore. God will bless your marriage. God will bless your children, your family. Your parents. I, I, I have got one more thing that the Holy Spirit laid on my heart very specifically. I never talked like this before. When Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, They found that they were naked. They had never noticed it before. That's what the Bible says. And then they hid themselves. But God had heard that cry from the garden. The angel Gabriel came and said, Oh, my Lord. Adam and Eve have sinned. The Lord didn't say, Gabriel, this is my Sabbath. <laughs> I've worked six days. This is my day of rest. Give my regards to Adam. <laughs> I'll attend to him tomorrow. Did he do that? No, what did he do? God Almighty broke his Sabbath and arose. For God, it is impossible to do nothing as long as one soul is lost. It's impossible. He arose and he called, 
Adam, where are you? He knew exactly behind which shrub <laughs> he was hiding. But he asked the question because he needed an answer. You see, he needed an answer. Adam, where are you? You know, when I think about this, I could cry tears. It touches me so much. This is what touches me. God, with an other word, said, Adam, if you can be without me, I cannot be without you. Adam, where are you? God started to seek man in the garden. And then he sent his son to earth to seek and to save us. This Jesus is now here by the Holy Spirit. And the same question comes now. Adam, Eve, Oliver, Olivia, Jack and Jacqueline, John and Paul, whatever your name is, where are you? I want to set you free. I want to save you because I love you. We have to respond. When God says, where are you? Don't do what Adam did. He tried to justify himself. I think what God wants is this. When he says, Adam, where are you, Eve? Where are you? We have got to respond and give him our position by just forgetting ourselves and by just jumping up, lifting our hands and crying, Jesus, I am here. Jesus, I'm here. Jesus, I'm here. Jesus, save my soul. That will be your moment of salvation. That will be your moment of salvation. You understand? Can I tell you one more story? Yes. Quickly, quickly. <laughs> I will never forget it because it was so fantastic. I was invited to preach in a church. And I went there. That's long ago though. But I will never forget it. When I arrived in the church, the church was full. There were about 200 people. But to my surprise, all the people in there, all of them, had white hair. <laughs> I thought, what happened to the young people? <laughs> I nodded my, my friend through whom I got that invitation there. I said, Harold, where are the young people of this city? He said, I'm glad you noticed it. <laughs> I preached. When the meeting was over, Harold came to me and he said, do you really want to know where the young people are? I said, yes. He said, get into my car. I'll take you there now. The time is just right. 
11 p.m. I got in the car, we drove around, drove around, industrial area, suddenly I see a huge building. Flashing lights. Nightclub. Disco. Disco! He said, come. I said, come, come. I look like a preacher. He said, do you want to know? I don't want you. You don't want to know. I said, I don't want to know. <laughs> Come in. I followed him. I got in. There was the dance hall. Suddenly the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, take a peek. I opened the dance hall door. Double door. I looked in. I saw. Gee. It was all packed, packed with people, young people dancing like the devil. <laughs> and I looked and the lights were more off than on. <laughs> and I looked and I looked and I looked. And suddenly I saw the faces of these young men and these girls. I saw their faces and I saw they were looking for something the disco couldn't give them. Yeah. Huh. I pulled back, closed the door. I said, Harold, do you know the owner? He said, yes, I know the owner. Take me to him. <laughs> Reinhard, you are kidding. <laughs> no, you didn't even want to come into this building. What do you want to say to him? I said, I want to ask him for permission to preach. <laughs> he said, you are crazy, you are crazy. I said, no, take me, take me now. He took me to the man. Man, he looked like, I can't describe him. <laughs> I said, sir, I have a very special request. I've come all the way from Germany. I have a message for the young people here. Would you please give me five minutes, only five minutes to speak to them? He looked at me from top to bottom. He said, are you a preacher? <laughs> I said, yes. He said, you go and preach in your church. I said, sir, that's, there's a problem. There's a problem. The young people don't come to my church. That's why the preacher comes to the disco. He said, under no circumstances, get out. I walked out very disappointed. Suddenly, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, tell him what I showed you when you looked into the dance hall. I ran after him. I got him by his arm. Sorry, 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 sir. One question. Do you know that the young people find for life here in the disco, in your disco? His face changed. He said, strange that you say that. I thought many times the young people do not find here what they need in life. I said, I beg you again, give me five minutes. He said, okay. Tomorrow night, Saturday night, at sharp midnight, five minutes, remember? Five minutes! I nearly kissed that guy. I walked out to the car and then I started, oh, what, how foolish I have been. Why did I ask for only five minutes? Oh Lord, how foolish have I been. I put that five in his head. Lord, what now? I kept walking to the car, suddenly the Holy Spirit. He said, don't worry, Reinhardt. God created the world in six days. He can save a disco in five minutes. Hallelujah! 
next night I first preached in to the gray sheep in the church I can't remember what I preached I was already in the disco if I had told them they would have excommunicated me at half past 11 I was at the bar everything packed twice as many people there was only one one high stool empty at the bar but don't worry I drank coca-cola <laughs> and then the clock struck midnight I my Bible in hand I jumped onto the platform in the disco I took the mic from the DJ said to the young people sit down sit down sit down I've come all the way from Germany I've got to tell you something very quickly I didn't tell them that I only had five minutes they all sat down only then I realized that on the dance hall I'm on no chairs they all sat there on the floor and I, I started to preach I started to preach I preached one minute when suddenly I could feel it Whew. the Holy Spirit was there the Holy Spirit was there one minute later I saw the young people got their tissues and dried their eyes sobbing, crying everywhere and I knew now the time for the altar call has come. Good evangelist knows that. I said, how many of you want to receive this wonderful Jesus as your personal Savior? All hands came up. And now I'll tell you why I tell you this story. And that's only half a minute. A year later, I was invited by the same church. Harold waited for me at the airport. He said, Reinhardt, get in. I have a surprise for you. I got into his car and then I realized we were going into the same industrial area. I looked out and I saw my old disco building. There was no sign disco anymore. What I saw on the face of that huge building, a cross. <laughs> Harrod said to me, Reinhard, this is not the big surprise. Come in. I got into that building. It was packed with the young people who expected me. Funky, 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 funky. I was working the lights. I was the drummer. I was this, I was that. But now I am a child of God. If God can save a whole disco in five minutes, He's going to save everyone here, across the nation, wherever you listen to me. Amen. 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 So now, this is how the Lord told me to do. Just close your eyes. Jesus is saying, where are you? Calling you by your name. Where are you? Give him your position and cry back to him. Jesus, I am here. And the moment you do that, the key will turn in the lock of your prison. And you will be set free from all secret sins, 
from all public sins. Oh, here may be people who may say, you know, I grew up in a Christian home. I follow Jesus already 30 years, but I've never experienced the power of God in my own life. Just give him your position right now, wherever you are. I want to ask you to do something. I think that what has never yet been done, ever. But the Holy Spirit spoke to me to give you that option. If you have the courage to say, Jesus, I am here! Then jump up, lift your hand and shout, Jesus, I am here! Come on, shout it! Shout it! One, two, three, four, ten more, twenty more, fifty more remain standing. Jesus, I am here. Jesus, I am here. Jesus, I am here. Bow your heads. Close your eyes. If you want to follow the call of the love of Jesus and receive Him as your Savior, I would like to pray for you right now. Wherever you are, on any compass, wherever you are, Jesus is there to take your hand and come into you. And all the prison bars will vaporize you will remember this day this Easter as the day of your salvation if you want me to pray for your salvation with you just lift your hand that I can see and pray for you come on just lift your hand all over inside outside uh, the campus X and campus Z and everything just lift your hand let Jesus see your hand come on let Jesus see your hand. Let Jesus see your hand. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. This day is the day of salvation. I'm asking everyone to stand. And all those who raised their hands or should have raised their hands, please come forward right now or in your co respective campuses or wherever you are. There are men and women of God to help you. Please come forward right now.
Jesus will step into your life. You come out of bondage and you step into him. He steps into you. This is the most important moment of your life. What must we do to be saved? Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We are now calling upon the name of the Lord Jesus and ask him to turn that key in your lock and it will open miraculously and you will walk out singing it is well with my soul amen so I'm asking you just pray after me this prayer of salvation just close your eyes and lift your hands and I'm asking everybody please to lift your hands and pray this same prayer loud and clear in support of those who pray it here in front say dear Lord Jesus Christ Thank you for your word. Thank you for your word. Thank you for coming to save my soul. Thank you for coming to save my soul. Thank you for shedding your blood on the cross. I repent of my sins. I accept you by faith as my savior as my deliverer as my king as my good shepherd I receive you by faith in the name of Jesus One other prison door has been opened here tonight and that is the prison of the sick. The same procedure. By his stripes we are healed. If you are sick and you want healing, just lift your hand. I'm going to I pray a short prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke every spirit of infirmity. I rebuke the spirit of death in some. Blind eyes open. Deaf ears hear. The Lord tells me that somebody from hereditary paralysis is being healed right now. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. I thank you Holy Spirit that you are the healing spirit and that you are falling everywhere in Jesus mighty name Amen Hallelujah You know, the wonderful thing is not only this crowd, but everywhere we're meeting, there'll be people at the front of buildings and front of tennis arenas right now giving their lives to Jesus and people getting healed. So how amazing was that? Amen. If I can preach like you at 76. <laughs> I'll come and listen to you. <laughs> I'm only 14 years behind you, so. <laughs>